everyone and welcome to this new video my name is Nicholas and today I'm going to be showing you how to configure your paper 3d v4.5 for a mid-range PCs this video has as an objective show you my uh, configurations and uh, see if it works for your system I'm going to be linking down the descriptions and on screen my PC specs I have a Ryzen 3200G a uh, GTX uh, 1650 for VRAM and uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM so as you can see it's a pretty mid-range to low-range PC with anything further to add let's start with the video alright first off uh, we have uh, the general settings as you can see here we have the application information sound traffic realism the only thing we're going to be touching here in this particular part of the video is the traffic which affects the performance of your simulator so I have set everything to off and zero this due to uh, it being a real, real FPS killer I recommend having it everything on zero or disable it as it default next we have the display settings on the graphic part uh, we have the FX AA on off the anti-aliasing set to 4 times MS AA the texture filtering and 8 times and the texture resolution to medium as you may see these are pretty low settings uh, this because we want to get the better FPS and uh, we risk a little bit our quality of textures uh, I really recommend to have the FX AA off, this really consumes frames per second. If on the anti aliasing you still have bad frames per second, you can reduce it to 2 times MS AA. Next, we have the full screen settings. As you can see, I have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 and the resolution of my monitor, which is really, really bad. Um, the only thing I change here from the default is I unticked the blackout from desktop as I find it really unnecessary. What this does is uh, blackout the wallpaper you have on your PC while your uh, Prepare 3D V4 is running on full screen. Next we have the frame rate control. I have VSync enabled and triple buffering unticked. You may try this on your system setting it on on and activating the triple buffering may help you with performance next we have the target frame rate i really uh, recommend it to have on unlimited and if you want to limit it them some way please use nvidia control panel uh, as uh, the simulator thinks it has the unlimited frame per second but you're only going to reach 60 so it won't limit the use of cpu and gpu in the view panel settings this is not really relevant i just uh, have unticked the wide vi uh, view aspect ratio as i think this looks pretty unrealistic it kind of looks like a fish eye the next phase we're going to be checking out is the world and in terrain i have configured so we get a more gpu than cpu usage uh, so the level of detail radius is set to low Desolation factor is set to high, mesh resolution is set to 19 meters, and texture resolution to 1 meter. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the textures don't look that bad, actually looks kind of crisp with the use high resolution texture enable. This as well does not affect performance, I have tried it before. Alright, so next up we got the scenario objects, is a pretty mid to low configuration I would say more a uh, normal configuration of the scenery objects as you can see we have the scenery complexity to normal auto gen scenery draw distance to medium auto vegetation uh, it's to normal and building to normal remember if you have a low end CPU you might want to use these settings as this part of the uh, prepare 3d v4 settings it's fully CPU wise as the terrain one is more of a GPU. Then we have the water and uh, bathymetry. Uh, I have set water details to medium and haven't enabled any of these reflections or uh, the bathymetry. And finally, the special effects. This does not affect pretty much your performance, so you may set it to high or medium. Personally, I have set it to medium and it's working great for me. 
Finally, we have the lighting. Uh, this part is really depending on if you use tomato shade, MV shade, or any type of shader. I personally use MV shade. Um, probably going to do a video on my settings as well. Uh, but my brightness is set to 140, the bloom to 0, and the saturation to 140. Uh, then we have the dynamic lights, landing lights, and display lens frame on. Now the dynamic reflection I have it set to off as this is really a FPS killer as well. Then we have the shadows. The shadows are also a lot of CPU wise. So I have set the shadow quality to low and the shadow draw distance to ultra. And this part right here it really depends on your system. In my case I have all internal vehicle, external and simulation objects receive and cast on the vegetation of the buildings will only receive the the cast of the uh, clouds for example and finally we got the cast of the clouds which I think looks pretty good and realistic and last but not least we have the weather options uh, here depends on what add-on do you use for weather in my case I use active sky and it's pretty much configured by its own Alright guys, it's now time to show you how the simulator performs. Uh, I'm going to be showing you my FPS and how the textures look. We're currently located at Panama Tucumán International Airport. It's located in uh, Central America. Yeah, this is a payware scenery. Uh, I can't remember at the moment who made this scenery, but uh, it's pretty good. Uh, so yep, let's take off and show you a little bit with cinematics. As you may have seen, the simulator runs pretty smooth even though the graphics are not great. The terrain textures are pretty crisp and uh, the performance overall is pretty good even though I'm recording at uh, 60 frames per second and uh, 1080p. So taking this in account uh, for low-end PCs, these uh, settings will work pretty good. Uh, as you can see, we got uh, on at least 60 FPS as I have limited on the NVIDIA control panel. If you want me to do a tutorial on my Rex Skyforce or MV Shade or Active Sky, you can leave it down under the comments below and I will make any type of videos you want. That's it for this video. I hope you really enjoyed it and enjoy flying. Excellent day. Bye bye.